We're coming to you from the TCS headquarters here in Mumbai. Numbers came out uh, yesterday post-market hours, and numbers are absolutely in line with expectations, consensus expectations. Uh, I've got, as always, the top management team at uh, TCS joining in right now to take some questions. Rajesh Gopinath is a CFO at TCS. He's with us. Uh, Ajay Mukherjee is global head HR at the company. He's joining in. And Firoz Vandrivala is non-executive director at the company. He's with us here uh, as well. Thanks very much, all of you. Great to have uh, you guys, as always. So numbers look uh, absolutely solid. Uh, Rajesh, I just want to start with you. Should we assume that uh, this essentially sets the tone for the rest of 2013 as well? I mean, the uh, rates so. of growth that you've shown. I think so. Because uh, if you go back to what we had said beginning of 2000, uh, FI 13, we had said that uh, we are fairly positive in terms of being able to do slightly better than what the industry average uh, was. And we had also said that uh, the profile would be that H1 would be better than H2. And uh, looking forward into FI14, uh, we continue to remain um, along the same lines. So we do think that in FI14 also we should be able to deliver slightly ahead of industry forecasts, and that H1 would be probably better than H2. So fiscal 14, as you said in the press conference yesterday and later as well on the con call, will be better than fiscal 13? That's what we currently expect, yes. Uh, no reasons uh, to think otherwise. I mean, it looks pretty... Uh, stable and so steady. If you look at where we are today compared to where we were in the beginning yeah. of last year, yeah. um, we have we feel that that's the way it's going to be. Yeah, and uh, you'll be the NASCOM guidance as well. I mean, that's what that's uh, right. you look like broadly. I mean, that's right. Broadly, we should come in ahead of NASCOM guidance. Yeah, you know, I'll get to specifics as, in, as far as uh, the fourth quarter numbers are concerned. But I just want to because people just want to also know what's happening with the. Uh, the, uh, the the IT industry environment right now, because we had Infosys which reported numbers a few, I mean, a week back or so, and they've reported numbers which are, I mean, uh, diametrically opposite to what uh, you were reporting. So what is going on? I mean, what explains this, uh, Rajesh? And I'll come to uh, the both of you as well. So if you look at where our growth is coming from, it's coming from a diversified business portfolio. And uh, that's what's giving us so, hope. This is not tear away growth. This is not, you know, uh, growth the way it used to be a few years back. But a steady average uh, growth of about five, uh, 15 percent and in that range uh, should be fairly possible when you look at a long term trend, because you're going to you're seeing an industry that is restructuring. The industry is still very fragmented globally, and uh, it is consolidating, and that driver itself, and it is expanding. The growth of expansion is coming down, but it's still expanding. So you have an ex overall industry expansion, and then you have the consolidation drive going on. And we are benefiting from both. So I think a growth rate in that range of over 15% is a long-term sustainable Because uh, your peer is saying 6 to 10% uh, for fiscal 14. That's also a very wide band. So people want to know, I and mean, I think rightly so, what is it that you're doing right, and what is it that uh, Infosys is doing wrong? I mean, because there is clear divergence, right, so on all parameters. In terms of, I mean, uh, we have been fairly focused on ensuring that we have a diversified portfolio. Mm -hmm. So we have diversified along geography lines. Mm -hmm. We were the earliest to get into Latin America. Mm -hmm. We invested into China ahead of it. Uh, we were among the earliest ones to operate in Europe and to consolidate into Europe. Mm -hmm. On the industry side also, you would have seen that we have diversified away faster than the pack. Mm -hmm. Similarly, on the service lines, so back in 2005, 2006, we said we need to diversify into infrastructure and into BPO. We made aggressive investments in both the spaces. So what you really see today, both of them are delivering. So uh, if you look at the year, we got close to about 30% growth, both from infrastructure and BPO. So once you've invested, once you've got your portfolio diversified, in different periods, different parts of the portfolio will kick in and deliver yeah. the growth. Firoz, you want to take that? I think it's not fair to comment about somebody else. If no, you look I mean, at our, but, but just I mean, if we look at our yeah. portfolio, yeah. and as Rajesh says, right. the client base, the service base, mm -hmm. the geographical base, and that's why you see this little variation quarter on quarter. But when you have a base as diversified as that, mm -hmm. and not to get to some astronomical growth, looking at three, five percent quarter on quarter, fifty percent for the year, mm -hmm. it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just. Uh, yeah, but you know, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's a fair point. Ajay, uh, you want to come in? You're actually giving wage hikes. We are. Right? Yes. Uh, to many, that is that comes as a surprise because you've got the rest of the industry which isn't, which isn't doing as bad. So, I mean, you maybe would be able to attract talent even without wage increases in 
keep people without wage increases because the rest of the market isn't doing all that, all that well. But you, despite that, are giving wage hikes, right? Yeah. And that's good news for employees, but just talk about that. Yeah, sure. See, last year also we have given wage hike. This year also we are giving a wage hike. What we have said is average 7%. Mm -hmm. And then based on grade and performance, people would see anywhere between 5 to 10% or more at their increments, individual increments. Mm -hmm. Now, increments are, there are multiple factors that decide increments, and one of the major ones is if the company has done well, there is an expectation people need to be rewarded. And looking at our future plan, where we are, and what is the kind of growth that we are anticipating, and whether we are in a position to take this wage hike into consideration so that we still continue to deliver the margins at the stated level that we have set. An answer to both of them is yes, people do expect a reward, and they need to be rewarded for the excellent performance that we have delivered this year. It also sends year. out a strong, confident message yeah. to the market, right? Exactly. Yeah. That it sends out the message to the market, but more so from a people perspective. Mm. I think people do deserve the reward for the kind of and effort that they appreciate have, it. kind of effort that they put in, yes. Yeah. It's a company-specific thing. You don't, because there's an opportunity to deny somebody, you don't do that. It goes back to a few years ago when we honored every single campus offering when a lot of other stuff went on in the marketplace, 2002, 7 and 8, we were not in a fantastic place. Mm. But it's just a commitment that you want to keep. That you want to keep. Mm. You know, it's a part of how we run the business, mm. the group ethic, mm. and everything else. Mm.